in full disclosure, I was an angel investor in Robinhood before they launched. And when I met the founder, Vlad, and his partner, you know, they pitched me at a, a, a bar not too far from where we are right now in Palo Alto called Antonio's Nuthouse. And my friend Adeo, it's a really good story. My friend Adeo had asked me to speak at his Founders Institute, which is kind of like an accelerator for people who are thinking about starting a company. Yes. And so I gave a talk and then he said, hey, let's go to Antonio's Nuthouse and um, we'll meet Elon for a drink. Uh, and so Elon met us for a drink there. And it's the, it's the divest of dive bars. Uh-huh. Like you'll take a beer. I and love it, the well, image of all of this. You hang out with Elon. It's dirt the, on the floor. A crappy bar. Yeah, I mean, it is the worst bar in the peninsula. Like just garbage on the floor and like cheap beer and yeah. warm beer. And like you'll pick up your pint glass and be lipstick on it. Yeah. It's just brutal. Classy. Not your lipstick. You yeah. understand. Somebody yes. else's lipstick. Yes. And so we're sitting there and- Vlad walks up with um, his partner and he says, you're Jason Calacanis. And I said, tell me about your startup. He said, how do you know I have a startup? I said, you recognize me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and <laughs> I mean, that's the only way. And he goes, is that Elon Musk? And I said, yes, Elon, come say hi. And he came over and said, hi. I said, tell me what you do. He said, well, I'm a quant. And I said, what's that? And he said, quantitative analysis. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I know about that. That's like, you guys make algorithms and then try to beat the market, right? He's like, yeah. I was like, so you're going to pitch me on a startup and you're going to sell your algorithm to other people. And if it was so good, why wouldn't you just use it yourself and print money? He's like, yeah, yeah, no, no, that's not our business. Our business is we're going to create an app to get millennials to trade stocks. Mm -hmm. And I said, hmm, you do realize there's no retail investors anymore. Like the dot-com crash plus the 2008 financial crisis eliminated any individual's belief in participating in the stock market. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's the opportunity. I said, okay, I like it. Tell me more. He said, well, we're going to get these millennials to trade. I said, the same ones who live in their mom's basements and take Uber and Lyft and are on their no parents, money. have no money, got screwed and you know went 250K into debt for school and now can't get a job. Those people? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, they have no interest in their future, but they're going to trade stocks. He said, yeah, that's the opportunity. I was like, how, do you, how are you going to make money? And he said, well, that's the best part. It's going to be free. And I said, so your idea is to get a group of people who have no interest in saving for their future to trade and your business model is free. And he said, yes. I said, I'm in. (laughs) Because in almost all cases, the crazy outlandish ideas that nobody believes in are the ones that have the greatest returns. I mean, Uber, I introduced to about 25 investors and three of us said yes. So, you know, a full 12% of the community (laughs) who saw that deal decided to do it. So your sense about this idea being good had to do with the fact that this guy was just uh, crazy and ambitious and bold thinking? Or was it that there's something here in uh, allowing a much larger magnitude of people to be able to be investors? Yeah, the way to do really well as an angel investor or just in technology or in life is to not say what could go wrong, but to say what could go right. Mm-hmm. And then to just imagine for a moment, if it does work, what would the world look like? And so when Elon was investing in Tesla, um, and some other guys were running it and he was trying to save the company. Um, you know, it wasn't, is this going to work? It was almost positively not going to work. It was, and he knew that. Um, but if it does work, what does the world look like? And so that's really what you're looking for is not the chances of success, but if it does succeed, does succeed, what would that look like? And, you that's what the world needs more people doing. And so when you looked at Robin Hood, it was like, well, if he does succeed, what would the world look like? And now we've seen what it looks like. You have a generation who are so financially sophisticated that they know how to do puts and calls and shorts and research at a level that dominated Mm. the hedge fund industry. So let's pause for a second. These traders sitting there on a subreddit in a Discord server are able to do analysis and research and then act in unison to say, we're going to beat, in the Robin Hood sense, uh, you know, this group of sophisticated insiders who have more access and more access to capital, but we will figure out how to solve this problem. And, you know, things, most things don't work. <laughs> it's like the Wikipedia, like, there's no way, no way the Wikipedia would ever work. Right. Except it did, yeah. right? Like you're, you're like, how is this ever going to work? You're not paying anybody, but it's both the largest corpus of an encyclopedia ever. So I think Robin Hood actually succeeded. And then what we saw was 
this system and a lot of the systems in our society, whether it's the political system, the Constitution of the United States, uh, education, higher education, which you're involved in, uh, and then even the financial system, we have not stress tested and stress tested it, and we don't actually know all the edge cases and how it works. So Trump was able to just really put this crazy stress test. Like, it, is the democracy going to hold? Are we going to break this two or three, you know, 200 some year old experiment? And then we looked at the financial markets and it turns out there were more people shorting the stock than stocks were, than shares were available. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that's possible. And then I'm trying to uncover, where can I see a list of people who've shorted the stock? And it's mm -hmm. like, you can't, but we can tell you sort of how many every two weeks or maybe twice a week we can create a report. Maybe we know. 